Hello there and welcome to another episode of World of Tanks at Ingeni Titan. Um, here I want to take a look at the murder. Um, I've had the murder before the recent events that kind of interrupted in real life, she would say, interrupted my World of Tanks. Um, and I've had a few games in it. I've had some successful games, but not necessarily terribly exciting games. So I... Um, I had to make space on my um, garage because I well the slots. Um, I have a lot of tanks, and I'm probably going to wait for um, a sale to buy garage slots. Although I may do so, uh, but I have German tanks that I don't really need, and I decided to buy the Marder. And equip the Martyr, find a team. Uh, so most of the games that I've played in the Martyr uh, don't actually had, uh, have a team that had um, tank mastery. That said, I have enough, or I had, a, I have enough German uh, tier two and tier three um, premium tanks that I was able to run the team through those, um, the crew tr to, uh, through the premium tanks to gain tank mastery quite shortly after um, acquiring it. So I haven't had any, many games played in the matter. 25 games so far. Um, but I've, still, I've managed to gain tank mastery and I've managed to XP uh, a couple of the offshoots. I think the artillery and the Martyr 38T uh, have both been um, unlocked. And I now just need to unlock the Hetzer. To be honest, I'm really looking forward to the Hetzer. Um, the Hetzer is one I want to actually put a decent crew into at some point and play um, considerably. The Hetzer was the first tank that really terrified me in World of Tanks. Um, more so even in the KV-1. You'd come up against the Hetzer and my little British tanks and I would get my... Um, my ass kicked, uh, even in the Matilda. The Hetzer would um, have um, the ability to penetrate, it seems to me, at will. Sometimes one shot me, and um, I couldn't penetrate it back. So we're here in the first game on a um, Overlord, and I've just skipped for the start of it because, like I said, the games themselves aren't terribly exciting. It just shows the capabilities of the Martyr. Um, Gun handling is reasonable considering that I, you know, have a crew with practically no skills. Uh, well, actually, with no skills, or maybe not even mastery at that particular point. Um, I'm not too sure. I think the second battle I have mastery, but I don't think I have mastery in this battle. I was bottom tier, it's a tier 5 battle, so I was being extremely cautious, uh, which is why I skipped through a good chunk of the battle there, and I'm going to skip through another bit in a moment. Gun depression is reasonable. Um, I think this could be a hell of a seal clubbing machine uh, if you actually had a crew with um, a large number of skills in it. Uh, view range, gun handling, and um, stealth. You know, increase the tank's stealth, increase its um, gun handling by having, say, snapshot and smooth ride. Um, you need both because you're going to have to turn the hull quite a lot, so you're going to be. Um, um, looking at the bloom, gun, um, dispersion bloom from movement more often than you are actually from traverse, because, although the traverse is pretty decent. Um, so we speed up the next bit because again I just um, sat here for a while and then booted up along the side when I thought there was nobody looking. I just basically came up, see was there to be seen, and I know there was a tank destroyer there in the middle. And when I saw the light tank making the move, I decided I would assist him because an AT2 is pretty heavily armored. Now I went straight for the uh, premium rounds. I'm not too sure whether the gun would have been able to penetrate it with regular ammunition. Um, I must give it a try actually, but it's definitely no trouble with the premium, although I'm getting orange there. When it was sloped, um, so the regular rounds might have a problem, but still, it is a pretty formidable gun, and um, 
thing is, the tank itself was very little light of armor and very few hit points. So, even an AT2 will put it out of action pretty quickly. Um, probably take three or four shots because the AT2 doesn't do huge amounts of damage, but it has a horrendous rate of fire. But there's quite a lot of tanks that will one shot it um, at tier, and high, or a lot, most higher tier tanks will just one shot it. However, it doesn't have too much difficulty penetrating other tanks, so I have found that side of the tank to be very, very useful. And it's a very easy tank to get a fire for effect on, because again, it has um, very few hit points, so something like two, three penetrating shots, and you get your fire for effect. So that's not a very demanding um, thing to, in a particular game. Now, we've just spotted the uh, last remaining enemy tank. He's sitting at spawn point and he's probably AFK, so if I miss for that one, um, switch over to the regular ammunition because it's tier 3, M2 medium. Somebody else removes most of his head points and that's it, it's game over. Um, and because I had been damaging high tier tanks, I get a first class mastery out of this. Um, only 500 damage, 3 destroyed, and I get a first class mastery. And we come uh, second by experience. Second battle is on Prokhorovka. Again, I'm going to skip through large chunks of this battle because for a good substantial amount at the start of this battle, I um, was lagged out of it. I, well, I could move, but I had very uh, poor responsivity. If you look, even on the speeded up video, you watch the um, ping timer at the bars, you notice that I have very few of them. So um, Prokhorovka in tier, at tier 3 can be very, very odd. Uh, all sorts of stuff can happen. And this particular case is everybody rushes to the middle. I decide initially to be cautious because this is not, like I said, a very well armoured tank. So you just generally want to sit back and let stuff happen. However, as I was sitting back, I realised that my connection was extremely uh, tenuous. And that a lot of the time my tank was going to be unresponsive. I also sat back a lot longer than I might otherwise have because uh, we were detecting quite a lot of the enemy tanks. I mean, quite a lot of our tanks just charged over the top. And I was just amazed that nobody drove down the other side of the railway. Um, we're five, almost four and a half minutes into the game and nobody's appeared down by the edge of the railway track. And in fact, as far as I know, nobody... In this game, crossed over the railway line. Uh, nobody went east of the, um, the railway line. The whole battle took place uh, west of the railway, um, which is rather unusual. At about this point in the game, my um, connection had recovered. I had more or less control of the tank, and um, I decided that I was actually too far back that I actually needed to get closer to my allied players and um, if somebody went into the capture tomorrow well, we could deal with it. I'm going to give my conclusions now really. The Martyr is 2 is actually a very nice tank, a very formidable tank and like I said could be very formidable with a high skilled crew um, to the point of being overpowered possibly. Um, I'd need a lot more games in it to make the statement definitively like that. Uh, but it leads on to some interesting tanks. I don't know anything about the artillery uh, unit that it leads on to. I know very little about the German artillery. I haven't really played any of them uh, at all um, yet. I've been on the receiving end of Grillas and Humbles and stuff like that, and Vespers. Uh, it's not a pleasant experience. And I know I've seen. Um, Grilla game, Grilla and Humboldt gameplay, and they're relatively mobile, relatively um, well armored, and um, reasonably accurate artillery pieces. Um, don't know what this guy really thinks he's doing. He seems to be making an end run around the team, but he um, he opens fire on me from way too far away. Um, he is sufficiently far away that I can get. I can track him, uh, zoomed in, so I can shoot him uh, with the maximum chances of hitting him. 
And he has very little chance actually hitting me. I think he's put one round into my tank from uh, all that fire that he's delivered in my direction. If he wanted to take me out, he needs to be a lot, lot closer. Uh, and he had the opportunity of doing so. And he could possibly have gotten a lot closer to me by in the bottom of the uh, field in front of me. And actually be out of sight of the guys behind me. Um, however, to get back to the um, Martyr 2. Like I said, it leads on to an artillery piece. It leads on to the uh, Martyr 38T, I believe. And to the Hetzer. I think I've mentioned already, um, but I'm actually looking forward to the Hetzer. Um, my experience of the Martyr 38T has generally been as that of a victim. And it again has... Um, formidable tank destroyer uh, probably has all the same strengths and weaknesses I would expect that this thing has in the sense that it requires to be kept hidden uh, you know it doesn't have any armor doesn't have any hit points you need to be well back you need to stay um, out of sight out of contact and to make the most of a tank like that and that can be very difficult at low tiers because um, especially if it's your first um, line in a nation you don't have a crews with a lot of training you don't have crews with a lot of experiences or skills so you're playing these tanks with um, untrained crews possibly without tank mastery possibly without any skills you don't have six six cents you don't have reconnaissance you don't have any gun handling skills so they never quite show um, to their best, I think. In some ways they suffer in comparison to, say, tier 6 to 8 or tier 5 to 8 tanks. Um, because by the time you reach tier 5 you'll have a couple of skills under your belt. Or at least once you've learned anything about the game you'll have a couple of skills under your belt. So you're playing those tanks with crews that already have skills. And by the time you reach tier 8 you, you, you know, you... Well, I reached the point now where I really wouldn't want to play or don't want to play tier 8 tanks with less than 4 skills. I think it's kind of a minimum for tier 8 um, and upwards um, because the differences the skills make, particularly um, depending on the tanks, of course, you do, but um, in any kind of tank other than heavy tanks, I think 6 cents is much, uh, a must. Because you just need to know when you're spotted, um, you can then immediately relocate and um, try and find location to shoot without being spotted. The other skill that is really useful, of course, is Brothers in Arms because it uh, improves all the other skills. And then, depending on the tank, you could have stuff like I said, Smooth Ride and Snapshot. And all this stuff adds up, so um, yeah, with high tier tanks, you. Um, I think the. the uh, they compare better sometimes than they, the baseline tank might be simply because you are playing it with uh, skilled crews I mean it's like my experience with the charioteer a lot of people swear by the charioteer and I've seen um, YouTube videos of people doing monstrous games in the charioteer now I had an awful time in the charioteer because I started out from the archer with uh, no skilled crew um, so I had no skills in the archer um, maybe one or two skills in the Achilles, uh, training up my third skill in the Charioteer, or the Challenger. Might have had a fourth skill by the time I got to the Charioteer. Now I stuck with the Charioteer to about six skills, and at that point it was becoming uh, a decent tank. Um, I was learning to play it, but I also had enough games in it to have a fair bit of experience. But the skill set was starting to actually benefit, synergize with the tank's strengths and weaknesses. So uh, anyway, I hope you found that interesting uh, and that you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you again soon.